What's up guys, this is Android Knight and today I'm going to show you five more Android launches that you probably haven't heard of. This is going to be off the back of my top five Android launches 2014 video, which for some reason did really, really well. So these are five more that you probably haven't heard of. Enjoy the video. So the first home screen we're going to look at today is called Terrain Home. This is by a sort of branch of Samsung. I think they've been developing art on the side. So I imagine at some point it's probably going to come into some of their major phones. Um, if they like what they're doing. It's kind of interesting, it's got a couple of um, sort of slightly newer features. It's got your, sort of your normal home screen set up, you can customise the amount of home screens you've got, you can change which one is the default one, all that kind of thing. You unfortunately can't change the icons yet, so there's not actually much customization. You can obviously add widgets and everything like that, but you can't change the amount of columns and rows on the home screen, so you've got a sort of fairly limited setup. If you swipe from the left side of the screen, you get what they call the terrain sidebar. And this is kind of interesting, it's kind of a combination of sort of blink feed, and that thing that LG are doing which is basically a, blink feed, uh, basically a blink feed clone and it's also got some sort of Google Now aspects so what you do is you can choose to add your different cards so if you go into edit you can see these are the ones you've got and these are the ones you can change the order of all of them and a couple of them have different settings so like for the weather you can change the location things like that and if you go to the bottom you've got an add cards option and then you've got a few different cards to add so for example a CNN headline you can tap it and it'll open up in this um, in this sort of pocket browser thing that comes with it. There is an option in the settings to have it so it'll just open these links straight to Chrome. But actually this is quite a nice elegant way of doing it. You can hit back and you go back to the sidebar. On the other side of the screen, if you swipe to the right, you've got all your applications. And this is kind of a Windows Phone um, action laundry kind of thing. So you've got the scroller on the side, which is actually... Ooh, which is actually really useful, it's quite a nice way of scrolling through all your apps. There's a search feature where if you scroll up, it launches sort of a Google Now again kind of clone search. So if you search for say Facebook, you get the options to search Google, search Maps, search the Play Store, you can either go on Yelp or you can go onto YouTube. I'll just quickly show you the settings so you can see what you can actually customise. So you can change the number of home screens, which one's your default number of icons on your home screen and the number of dock icons so it's not a hugely customizable launcher but if you really like the look of it then give it a go the next one is called blur this is pretty much a Kit Kat style launcher so you can see you got the things here it's got a couple of things that make it look maybe a little bit more like L you can swipe up to get to all of your applications you can also hit the home button and that will launch you straight into your applications as well which I really like that's something I've been doing on Nova launcher for a while so for me that feels really sort of natural as you can see there's full icon support you can also double tap to turn off the screen which is kind of neat so the interesting thing with this launcher is it's got pages and cards and now cards act a little bit like Google Now. At the moment it's pretty limited, you've only got weather, calendar and alarm. Then what we've also got is pages. So page one at the moment I've got set for blur info and this just displays all of the cards that you choose. Next up I've got talent for Twitter and page three I've got a calculator. So this launch is by the same guys who make talent. They also make a SMS app called I think Sliding SMS and at the moment they're the only app supported but you can basically have them so they're easy access from the side of your screen. As you can see, it is a little bit buggy. The card page often disappears, and sometimes if you swipe all the way to the calculator one, occasionally when you swipe back, the Twitter one will have disappeared. But when it works, it's pretty nice, and actually having this full screen Twitter is really, really useful. If you've got the other one set up as well, if you use Slide SMS, you can also get that in full screen, which looks pretty neat. Um, but Talon is definitely my favorite Twitter client at the moment, and it's quite interesting that they've integrated that sort of into a launcher. So I'll just show you the rest of the settings. You can change the size of the home screen grid, which is really nice, also the all app grid. Then you can mess around with padding, things like that. You've also got some options for screen orientation. You can customise your gestures, which is really useful. And then, and at the bottom here, you've got the option to decide what the bottom button does, which is kind of cool. You can also choose icon packs. You can choose whether to display the names or not. You can choose the size of them with the icon scale. And then you've also got a bunch of different home screen um, transitions to play with. There's nothing sort of particularly revolutionary in the customizable options, but at least all the customization that most other launchers like Nova and things would have. Next up, we've got Jolla Launcher. This one's pretty interesting. This is a clone of the Sailfish UI, which I believe is actually built off Android. But um, Sailfish is one of those ones that's been knocking around for a while. I don't think it's ever really going to come to fruition, or at least not in sort of major markets. But um, it's pretty interesting. So you get presented with this, this is your new lock screen. If you go down, you can hear it vibrate and make a noise, and you can go there to silence, drag twice to go to your phone, three times for your camera, and four times to go to about. Um, the whole purpose of this launcher, or the whole sort of design language behind it, is to try and make it so it's all gesture based. You swipe up once to go from here to your home screen, 
and your home screen is populated by your recent apps which shows cards. Um, at the moment they just show the icon but if you go into one, for example Instagram and then close it and you can close from swiping from the edge of the screen in then you get a nice preview of it. You can then swipe up again to get to all of your applications and this is where the launcher starts to fall down in functionality a little bit. I mean it looks quite nice but it's really not easy to find which apps you're looking for because there doesn't seem to be any discernible order. If you hold down on an application it goes into editing mode. You can then drag it and add it to another app to form a folder. You can then change the folder name just by typing in there and you can also change the folder icon. But the folder icons are pretty limited and don't really give you any information as to what's actually in the folder. The only trouble is if you put a folder in the dock you can't see the label underneath so you don't know what it is because it's not particularly obvious just based off the logo. There's also a couple of themes for this and I literally mean a couple. If you swipe across either way you get OOB Creative or OOB Playful and all this does is change the wallpaper but there's only two to choose from and you can't set anything um, from your phone. So it's a fairly limited launcher but it is really interesting. This isn't actually on the Play Store, it's in XDA Developers but I will put a link in the description below if you want to have a play around with it. This is Lucid Launcher and this is awesome for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the way that it handles widget resizing. Now most launchers when you resize a widget it snaps it to a grid and you can have it do this on Lucid but the other option is just to have it where you can just drag and resize completely freely. So I can resize this completely freely, it's not snapping to any grid, it's completely sort of organic if you want to call it that and lets you do whatever you want with it. It's really nice if you really want to customize using different widgets. The other cool thing is as you can see you can make it so that the widgets don't, um, don't sort of occupy one space, you can layer them on top of each other which lets you do some really cool effects. So if you want to actually customize stuff this is a really nice launch to use. These widgets are both Zupa widgets and I think they're both some flat skins, um, I'll put links to both of those in the description. But if you want to customize stuff using widgets I think Lucid Launcher is probably my number one at the moment. The other cool thing it does is on the side you've got a Google search bar so it kind of mimics the um, mimics the KitKat sort of thing. If you go the other way you get all your apps in a nice um, vertical scrolling grid. You can also search at the top which is kind of cool. And then the other really cool thing this does is it scrolls vertically. So I've got three home screens set up like that. <laughs> got a Doctor Who widget. You can obviously change the icons here. This icon pack is called Lumos. It also has a favourites bar so if you swipe in from the left you get your favourites. You can add these favourites really easily if you just go into your app drawer, hold down an app and just add it to your favourites. The final launcher today is Voxus Launcher. This is by a guy called Cold Fusion or Fushion or however you pronounce it. He's on YouTube, he does um, music and um, customizing reviews and stuff like that and he wants to make this launcher with sort of a really minimal style and to some degrees I think it kind of is successful. I quite like this sort of launch page you get when you start the launcher. You can customize all of these icons for whichever one you want. You can also change the, um, you can change the icons and resize them which is kind of neat. If it also if you tap, if you tap on this cross, it does a little spinny thing which is unnecessary but looks quite cool. One of the things I don't like about it is you've probably noticed here there's a legacy button here which is just pretty unnecessary and I don't like the way the settings page just looks for me kind of ugly. I think it's kind of Windows inspired um, but I don't particularly like it. You can mess around with a couple of settings here. One of the best ones is you can hide the top bar or reveal it. Replace your status bar with a really minimal battery and timing thing. You can also tap at the top to change it from percentage to a um, graphic. So if you scroll across you get your essential applications. You can customize the color of this if you hold down. Also if you hold down here you can change what this text says. I've just got it to say Steve's phone and it doesn't launch anything but it's actually a folder so if you tap it you get the option to add apps. Then I've customized all of these to have my social apps stuff which is my like files and things. Reading and watching. Then you can scroll across and then you've got a page here with your time and a bunch of icons here. You can customize all the icons and you can move them around but kind of like the other launcher I just talked about it doesn't snap icons to a grid so if you move them around it starts to look pretty messy. And then across here you can add more pages just to add widgets to. I do like the fact that if you scroll left you get a sort of running apps thing and there's also a link to your settings. I think there's quite a lot of potential with this. I think it needs to be a lot more customizable. For example, I don't want it to say essential applications there in that font. I don't think it looks particularly good. But the whole thing is quite nice. It's something you can easily replicate on other launches if you wanted to, which is what people were doing before. And to be honest, I think if you really like this look, you may as well just nick the wallpaper and make your own thing in like Nova. But if you do like the look and you just want to try it out, you can install this from the Play Store. I hope you enjoyed that guys, like this video if it was useful and if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't seen it before. You can follow me on all my social media things in the links in the description, things like wallpapers, iPhone packs, 
um, little app, random apps I suggest, things like that. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Peace. But that looks awesome.